So I think Megan's story actually leads very nicely into Faye's story. So, whether, so I'd like to introduce you now to, uh, to Faye, and Faye will tell you her story um, about uh, how she came to, uh, to Liverpool. Over to you, Faye. Uh, my story happened many years ago, and I didn't even think much about it. But when my husband and I had our golden wedding anniversary, uh, our children, my daughter and her husband and my son, decided to give us a holiday to Danzig. That is a co uh, the country I was born in. It's now part of Poland and it's now called Gdansk. But at the time when I lived there, it was the free city of Danzig. Uh, we, uh, when I got there, I, I, was, I was in two minds whether I wanted to go or not, because I'd heard that it had been very badly bombed and all the uh, buildings had been uh, in rubble. But uh, you can imagine my amazement when I got there that the, it looked almost exactly the same as when I lived there. It seemed the people in Danzig decided to rebuild the, the city almost exactly as it was when I lived there. And I was looking around and I was standing on this bridge and I happened to look along the harbor and I had a really strange feeling because I, I felt as though I could see myself as a child running along the harbor on my way to school. And I felt very, very uh, nostalgic and very sad. And I was wishing myself back to, to those times when I was little and I was surrounded by my parents and all my family and my friends. And then after a while, I, I thought about how the last year or two, things got really bad in, in Danzig. The Nazis seemed to take over, and you saw all these soldiers, uh, some in their black uniform, the SS, and the SA in their brown uniform, and all the, the main buildings had uh, these German flags with the swastikas on it uh, hanging. And there were notices in, in the main buildings and in some of the shops to say that Jewish people weren't allowed there. It was really awful. And the, quite a lot of people were arrested. My parents had a tailoring business. And uh, the German people were told that they mustn't deal with any Jewish people. That, uh, and the business went right down. Hardly anybody came to have any clothes made at our, our, our works. And things got really bad and you got really scared. They made you feel as though you should be ashamed to be Jewish, that it's, it, Jewish people were bad people. You know, they, they really made you feel bad about it. Anyway, one day, um, the school I went to uh, sent letters to our parents uh, telling them that uh, if, if they wished, they, their children would be taken to England to safety. And, um, and the, uh, you see, the British government at that time decided they would allow 10,000 children from occupied countries to come to England because they realized that things were really bad there. And anyway, my parents decided to let me come to England. And my brother, he was quite a bit older than me. He had already left Danzig. And uh, he, he and some of his friends got on one of these ships to leave Danzig. And, the trouble was they would, none of the countries would allow them to, to land there. And things got really bad because uh, they were running short of food and everything. And anyway, fortunately, in the end, they 
were allowed to uh, land in Israel. And my sister, she was older than me. She just left school. And they were, uh, my, my parents were told that she couldn't come on my kinder transport because uh, uh, she would have to have somebody to sponsor her uh, who lived in England. Uh, fortunately, my mother, she had an uncle who lived in London, so she wrote to him and asked whether my sister could come to London, uh, whether he would sponsor her, and which he agreed to. And she came on the next a kinder transport to the one I went to. Anyway, uh, we didn't hear anything for a little while and all of a sudden we got a letter to say we must get ready immediately and uh, get ready to go, to go to England. Anyway, my parents uh, came to see me off at the, and uh, we got a coach on the coach. There were 70 children from our school whose uh, parents allowed them to come to England. And we all got on the coach. And of course, we didn't realize how, how serious it was because we were children and oh, there were 70 of us together. And it felt as though we were going on a holiday. You know, we didn't realize that we might not see our parents again. Anyway, then we got on the train and we went through Germany and we traveled overnight and we didn't sleep much that night. And then we went on to Holland. And in Holland, uh, we went to this big hall and they gave us uh, a meal to eat and uh, we stayed there until the evening time. And when the evening time came, they, they, we all uh, got taken to the, the docks where there was a boat there. And we got on the boat and I know um, we, we were shown into this cabin and there were all these bunk beds and uh, they asked us to have a sleep, you know, on it. And I think we were that tired. I know myself, as soon as I closed my eyes, I must have gone to sleep because when I woke up, it was the next morning and we'd already landed in, in England. Anyway... We landed in Harwich and uh, then we were, got on the train again and we went to London. And then we were in this big hall and some of the children were uh, taken by families to, to stay with them. But uh, uh, nobody asked me to go and stay. So in the end, they put me on another train and I felt as though I was living on a train all the time and I landed in Liverpool, they took me to Liverpool. There was, uh, when we arrived at Liverpool, uh, there was a lady came to meet me and she, uh, she was the head of the refugee committee of Liverpool and I went to stay with her. She, she took me to her house and uh, it, it felt really strange because um, I was living in a, in a different country and uh, ev I couldn't understand what anybody was saying because I could only speak German at the time and, uh, and people had to sort of use sign language to, to tell me and say, well, that's a chair, that's this and that's the other. And uh, it was quite difficult, but uh, the lady was very, very nice and uh, I stayed with her about uh, a month and she don't like me to stay with her but uh, she was a very busy lady and she used to have to go to a lot of uh, meetings so she thought it'd be better for me to be with the family so anyway she found this family who lived in Wavertree and they took me in they, they weren't Jewish people they were a Christian family and they had a little boy and uh, they, they took me in and they, they were very kind to me. They treated me almost uh, right out from the beginning as a member of the family. And I did get a few letters from my parents from Danzig for a while. But then in September, 
<coughs> the war broke out and, uh, and I didn't hear anything more. In the meantime, all the children used to stand around me because they'd never met anybody from a different country and, and they thought it strange to meet somebody who couldn't speak English, you know. And uh, so I learned quite a lot of English from the children, you know. And uh, I think when you're young, you, you do pick up a language a lot quicker than when you're older. And there was a, a naughty little boy who thought it'd be a good idea to teach me a few swear words. And uh, so then I was told that you don't say words like that when you say hello to people. So I soon learned not to use these swear words. Anyway, I went to the school there, and then in, in the September 1939, the war broke out. Uh, Britain declared war to uh, Germany, and we were quite scared because uh, we kept looking at the sky, wondering whether there was going to be uh, airplanes come to bomb us or what was going to happen. Uh, and they uh, issued it with air raid shelters. If you had a garden, uh, you got one of those uh, a sort of shelter made out of steel that you half buried into the garden. And you had to go there when the raids uh, happened. And anyway, one... One night there was an air raid, it was like a, a wailing sound, and uh, we uh, all went, uh, we must have been very tired, our family, because we, we slept right through it, I, we didn't hear it. So it wasn't until I got to school the next morning, and all the children were all excited about saying, oh, you, there was an air raid, you know, and they were talking about it. And I was quite miffed because I, I couldn't have anything to talk about because I'd slept right through this air raid. But after that, things did get very serious and we did have a lot of air raids. And uh, the, the raids were, the, the siren would go and we'd all rush into the shelter. And then uh, after the raid, then the old clear went and we get out and go back to the house. And it kept hap happening all the time. So in the end, we just stayed in the shelter. We went, uh, instead of going to bed, we went into the shelter and, and we sort of slept there, you know, because uh, it was so disturbing to have to get in and out all the time. Anyway, uh, for a while we were evacuated with a, you see with Liverpool being a seaport it, it, it got bombed quite heavily and a lot of people lost their houses and a lot of people were killed you know because uh, they, they just bombed anywhere and uh, so in the end we went to Wales for a while to, to, uh, to be safe you know and, uh, but after a while we got a bit fed up and we came back to Liverpool. And uh, so anyway, after a while the air raids uh, uh, stopped a bit more. And uh, so when I got a bit older, I left school and I went to college and I, I learned uh, sort of shorthand and hype, typing and office work and I got a, a job in, to, in, in the city, in, and uh, so I, I just got on with my life, you know, and, and I, I was like a teenager, and the same with everybody else. There still were air raids now and again, but uh, you, you got used to it, you know. And then uh, when the war was over, all of a sudden, the, uh, there was all sorts of celebration. There was bonfires lit everywhere and, and street parties and there were, uh, everybody was uh, really delighted that the war was over. And then I heard from my sister in London and my brother, he was in the army in Israel and he managed to come to, he got some leave and managed to go to London 
and, uh, and my sister asked me to travel to London. Of course, while the war was on, we couldn't travel very far. So anyway, we had a reunion, and it, must, it was lovely to see them. And it must have been strange, because uh, I was a child when they last saw me, and then when they met me again, I was sort of grown up, you know, and it was lovely to, to see them again. Anyway, uh, in 1947, I received a letter from the Home Office uh, saying that they couldn't find anybody in Danzig, any of my family, and they classed me as a displaced person, and they asked whether I would like to become a British citizen. So that's what happened, I became a British citizen. And I, I was very upset about it, of course, naturally, with losing all my family. But uh, so I, I just tried to put it behind me and, and tried to get on with my life. And anyway, eventually I met Frank, my husband, and we got married and uh, we had uh, uh, two children and I've got some grandchildren now. And uh, I just got on with my life. And all I can say is that I was so grateful to think that I had my life saved by becoming a kinder transport. And I was so grateful to all the people that I met who were so kind and made me feel so welcome in England. And I'm glad to be here to tell you my story. Okay, so the way we do this now is there's an opportunity for about uh, five minutes or so for anyone who wishes to ask Faye any questions. But I will tell you now, A, she never met Hitler, and B, she won't tell you what those naughty words were that, uh, <laughs> that, the, that the little boy was... Not that we have any naughty little boys in this room, or naughty little girls. I'm just looking for my friends over there, because I ignored them last time. Any questions from the back there yet? Right. Nope, okay. Yes. Uh, sorry, switch my microphone. Um, how old were you when you got transported to England? I, I was 11 years old. Is anybody here 11 years old? Oh, yeah, so I was <laughs> your age when I came here. Yes. I, know I shouldn't do this, but uh, how old are you now, Faye? I shouldn't ask a lady your age. Uh, I'm the big 9 0 now. <laughs> Of course, the kinder transport, it happened a long time ago, so most of the, any that have survived are either in the 80s or the 90s now. Okay, so I'll, I'll try and get as many as I can, so uh, Ranworth Square. <coughs> yep. Oh, is it? My name was a Jewish too. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, Nan was Jewish, right? Okay, thank you for letting me... Oh, that was interesting. Do you still have any family or friends left? Uh, well, uh, up, to, up to last year, I had my sister who lived in, in London... She died last year, but uh, we used to visit each other, and she used to come to Liverpool, and I used to go to London to visit her. And uh, when my my brother, of course, he hasn't survived either now, but uh, he came from uh, Israel, and they came to stay in in England for a while, but and then they went on to America, and. But, um, of course, they, they, they haven't survived now, you know, because they were older than me. Uh, How did you feel when you got the letter from 1947, 1914? 
1947. How did you feel when you got the letter about being a displaced person? Uh, well, I, 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 was, I was really upset because I was hoping that eventually we could get all together and uh, I felt really sad about it, but I realized that there's nothing I could do about it and uh, so I just tried to put it at the back of my mind and, and just got on with my life then. The young lady from Anfield, please. Where in Wales was your evacuated? Oh, um, it was a, a place called Holkin. And uh, some of the, the family I lived with, uh, they had relations that lived there, so we went to stay with them. And uh, it was quite nice there, but uh, this very crowded school that we went to. What's kinder transport? What is kinder transport? Uh, kinder transport in English, it is children's transport, children who are transported from one country to another, yes. Uh, How did you feel leaving your mum with that behind? Sorry? How did you feel leaving your mum that behind? When she left her mum that behind? Go. How did, you, how did you feel when you had to leave your mum and dad on the kinder transport? Well, it, that was strange because uh, to me, the, there were all these children, there were 70 of us set off, and it didn't occur to me that I wouldn't see them again. I, I had the feeling that they would join me fairly soon, you know, and come, come to England as well. So, uh, in a way, it was almost like having an outing, you know, and, and, and going, it wasn't till I got older that I realized that I was, realized how, how upset I was, uh, not that they weren't with me, you know, and I missed them quite a lot. One last question from the young lady right at the back. Was she scared and you had to leave? Were you, were you scared? Uh, well, uh, I, w I, w I was scared in a way, but, but things were fairly bad in, in Danzig at, at the time. You were pretty scared. Uh, uh, in Danzig because people so hated the Jews and, and, and you, felt, uh, you felt scared and you wondered what was going to happen to your, to your parents, you know. And, and if, if there were a lot of people were arrested then, you know, and I thought, what would happen if, if my parents were arrested? You know, I wouldn't, what would happen to us, you know? So it was a strange feeling when your child uh, you, you, you depend on your parents to look after you, you know, and it was a strange feeling. We were living in strange times at the time. Unfortunately, <clears throat> we don't have time for any more questions to Faye because we do have to move on to, uh, to uh, John and Sonia, okay? So can we give uh, Faye another big round of applause? <laughs>